We're continuing uh, our statistical treatment of data by looking at the Q-test again. I already had one video on the Q-test, but this one's going to focus on a Q-test for titration specifically. And this will often need to be checked when you have a suspect point. So the Q-test tells you if your suspect data is actually a valid point or a point that should be thrown out. So uh, briefly in review, uh, the Q-test takes a look at two different Qs, the Q of data versus Q critical. The Q critical are tabulated values. If you don't have this table, you need to write it down. Q data is literally from your data, where you calculate the gap over the range and the absolute value of each of those. The gap is your suspect point they think might be bad data, subtracted from the closest numerical point to it, and then divided by the range, the suspect minus the furthest numerical point from it. You calculate that and you compare Q data and Q critical. If Q data is smaller than Q critical, that's a good point. But if Q data is greater than Q critical, that's a point that should be thrown out. So here's how it could work for a titration. When you're doing a titration, you have a titrant, that's what's in the burette, and then the analyte, what's being titrated, or what's in the flask below the burette. So we have our titrant and analyte, just in our random example here. Here are our trials, or n. Remember, n is the number of trials. Same n, as you see over there. And uh, right here, these are my data points. Okay? I know the volume that I'm titrating, and I know the volume of the analyte. And what's helpful often when doing titrations is to know that ratio, or the HCl in this case over the sodium hydroxide ratio. So I just literally took those ratios for you to get 0 0.394, 0 0.962, 0 0.998, and 1.01. I'm looking at those ratios, and I see this first data point here. And I say, wow, that ratio is way off all the others. Maybe that first trial is no good, which is not unusual. Sometimes you're doing a cursory, uh, cursory titration, or you're doing a titration thief technique, or something like that, just to find the endpoint. And then after you find it, the further trials are easier because you just titrate right below the endpoint, and then you go slowly from there to get a more precise measurement. But the first time, you're not always able to do that because you don't know where the endpoint is. So often in titration, you might be du double checking your first trial to see if it actually is a, a useful data point to you or not. So let's do the Q-test on it to see if that first trial is good or not. All right, so I'm gonna take the gap on top, which is the suspect data, the 0 0.394, and I'm gonna subtract that off from the closest numerical point to it. That's the point 0.962. Numerically, that's the closest number. Take the absolute value of that. In the denominator, I'm going to take the range, which is, again, the suspect point, 0 0.394. Subtract it but by the point that is numerically furthest from it, and that's the 1.01 is furthest away. OK. You do a little calculation to find that value. I did that for us. I got 0.922. I compare that value to Q critical. Again, where is Q critical? It's a tabulated value. I just look in the table. Uh, in this case, I have n equals 4, the number of trials are 4. That's 0 0.76. OK. In this case, you can see that Q data is numerically larger than Q critical. When Q data is numerically larger than Q critical, that's a suspect point is actually a bad data point. So this is not a good data point, and I am going to not use that first trial in the rest of my analysis.